It's Tabitha with Mick Harper Manor. We are here live. And we are going to make some peg dolls with you today. I hope you guys are ex excited as we are. We just love these little guys. So this one, this is a me. Haley, where's yours? Right there. You hold it up, let's see. Kinda looks like Haley. Yeah. All right. So, we are gonna need some supplies today. We are going to need our peg dolls and that's the biggest thing. If we don't have peg dolls, because Amazon has just been so overburdened with all of this, we still want you to paint along. If anybody has popsicle sticks, like big chubby popsicle sticks, if you have, um, what else did we talk about? Paint sticks, like big paint stirs. If you have things, um, you know, just like a, a extra piece of wood, you are welcome to paint along with that. You can even paint on paper and just draw out a peg doll. Um, we just want you guys to play with us today and work on this with us. If you don't complete the project today, you're just practicing. You're going to be even better at making peg dolls when you actually do it. So we're going to start with, we're going to call it our blank today. All right. Because it may not be a peg doll. It may not look like this and that's okay. We still want you to create. Um, we will also need some paint to paint these with. Haley and I have a little stash of some basic acrylic. It's more like a craft acrylic. So we are using just um, black and white, our three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. We've got some fun colors over here, like a little sage, some coral and turquoise. We have a nice like milk chocolate color and a little beige to make some skin tones. Yeah, lots of fun stuff going on. Uh, we also are gonna need some brushes. So we've got a flat like quarter inch brush. We've got some round brushes, thin liners. The liners are really helpful when you're going to do the eyes you, you're welcome to use a Sharpie for the eyes, and we'll talk about that later, but we're gonna, we're gonna have a liner to do that with too. And paint palette, if you have one, if you don't have a paint palette, you're like 99% of America, and you can use a plate, all right? <laughs> you really can. Yeah, you have a palette? Yeah, you're laughing sure. at me, you have a palette, yeah. Haley, Haley's a goofball. She's my girl. So she is my oldest daughter that I didn't get to give birth to, but I'm pretty sure she was cut out for me. She's, she's my, my artsy little, my artsy little double here. So she's going to be so fun to have with you today. She's probably going to crack you up because she cracks me up all the time. Um, maybe. maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> she does give herself a little, a weird accent sometimes we're trying to dial that back so if it comes out we didn't you know we didn't bring her over overseas or anything so <laughs> um what else do we need today so we have a water basin too and we're protecting our surface these acrylic craft paints are you're able to wipe them up off of a table pretty decently but you got to move quickly if you want to they will stain um they will definitely stain clothing so we are both aproned today as well old art shirts work too um, egg crates would be great for another option for the little peg people. You can cut up the little paper egg crates that you have, the egg cartons, and paint their little bodies on there too. They just be like a little weeble people. Super cute. Um, anything else that we need? Um, paper towels are okay too. I, you're going to see me wipe on my apron a lot. Uh, if you don't have an apron that's covering your, you know, where you're wiping, <laughs> unless you have painting games like I do. So yeah, just get yourself something to blot after you dry your brushes or after you wash your brushes, just to dry them off. You don't want to water down that acrylic too much because it'll run a little bit. Other than that, um, those are our supplies we're going to use for today. Today, we did want to talk about, you guys have been so amazing in thanking me, but I want you to know that it's not just me doing this. There are a lot of people doing things behind the scenes to help this happen. The response to this has been unimaginable. It has been so overwhelming. We are so flooded with love. I'm surprised I'm not crying talking about it right now. Um, I'm a crier, right? <laughs> 
I am. I am. Yes, I'm a crier. Yes. Yes. Um, we have been so just overwhelmed by this. So we have a lot of people helping us and the helpers right now, we need um, just to shout them out because it's unbelievable. We couldn't do it without them. Um, we have Stephanie from Sugar and Icing Cookie Company running our Instagram for us right now. She is amazing. If you like Royal Icing Cookie Cut um, videos or anything, you've got to watch her. She's phenomenal. Um, I could seriously sit in a rabbit hole and watch her just make cookies all day long. We have Derek from Twisted Visions Productions. He is helping us so that we don't look so silly just like in selfie mode doing these videos. We had no idea what we were doing and Derek um, was such a blessing. He just decided he was gonna come help us out. Um, we also have Missy from the, the Happy Groundhog Company. That um, She is my little my little mascots maker over here. We talked about Manny for a second yesterday, but Missy makes eco-friendly upcycled stuffed animals. And um, we have the little peg or the little pug guy over here and the little panda, we're the happy panda. Manny's little friends came to visit him today. So they're gonna hang out with him. Missy is Happy Groundhog Studio. You can find her on Instagram and Etsy. And these are so much love. She puts so much love into every single one of them with her husband, Sean. They are beautiful humans um, who are helping us here behind the scenes, just supporting us, answering your questions. Missy's been on the Facebook doing all of it. She's the one whose beautiful voice you hear asking questions while we're live. So um, I, wanna, I wanna step back for a second. Derek's company is Twisted Visions Media. I said it wrong. I wrote it down so that I wouldn't say it wrong, but then I still said it wrong. So welcome to having your face in front of thousands of people and not really knowing what to say. Um, we just, we've had a lot of love and a lot of help. We had a great lunch by Pickles and Bones today. So they are a barbecue company that is right here in Milford. They're doing amazing things. They are giving lunches to kids right now um, that can't get lunches, lunch through dinner. They're giving kids free lunch or dinner if you stop in their shop. They are here in Milford, but if you're local to Cincinnati and you're able to get out, they are amazing. So definitely check them out. The best food I've ever had. I even pay full price for it, still best food. Definitely check them out too. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, love on the people that are loving on us so we can love on you. All right, other than that, what else are we gonna talk about? You wanna, make some, you wanna make some pig dolls? Yeah. All right, let's do this thing. Tom is going to bring the camera around and we're gonna get an overhead shot so that you guys can see what's going on today. Just so these are cookie. super, super fun, super easy. All right, so we're going to start these guys with a little outline, okay? So what I like to do is I like to kind of draw a hairline. So am I gonna do a lady or a man or, you know, I'm not really sure exactly what I'm gonna do, but we are going to give her, let's, let's go with her and we're just gonna give her like a little hair swoop over here. And then I'm gonna kind of like cut out a notch for her ear. And then this kind of gives you options. You guys can leave these. You can actually leave their faces raw wood. I've seen some people do that and that's kind of fun too. Um, you know, I don't like that line and you can erase off wood. It's pretty easy. Some people are painting on rocks. Rocks are amazing. I love to paint on rocks, rocks for any reason. Yeah, rocks are perfect. Yeah, sure. You guys are so smart. See, I knew I could just leave this up to you and you guys could figure it out. Rocks? Paper, uh, let's see, what do we else we have? Popsicle sticks. Popsicle sticks are great. Um, paint, the uh, paint stir sticks. Paint stir sticks, yes. Egg cartons, all of those things that are the little egg, you know, yeah, what do you get your eggs in? The little crate guys. Oh yeah. Yeah, so for her, I've just lined her little face out and I've given her just a little hairline, notched her little ears out and kind of made a little area where you can see some of her flesh right here, okay? So we are gonna go ahead and we are going to mix up some paints. So Haley, whenever you're ready, baby, you just, you move at your pace, okay? And I want you guys to move at your pace today too. You do not need to keep up with me. These videos are always available for playback. 
they are always going to be something that you can just scroll down our screen or our Facebook page and then you'll be able to find them, reaccess them, watch them over and over and over because some of you guys have 40 peg dolls to make. So you're going to you're going to be making things. All the big peg doll kits. Yes, a lot of people had to get those cuz they were out of, you know, everything else. So how did everybody like the watercolor yesterday? Did anybody try that new went on wet? Did that anybody enjoy the little sparkles from that? And, and somebody said they want a close up of the ears. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So Haley likes to do the one ear over you know hair over one side and one ear out so that is kind of how I'm I just notch I make it like you know I have a thing about potatoes guys we talked about the potatoes yesterday with the elephants and I just you know notch out a little potato there potatoes. a little oval yeah y'all love them potatoes okay so on the face it's so small I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab a tiny brush. And I'm just gonna mix up a fun flesh tone. Thanks, Tom. Welcome. You guys never get to see Tommy, but you will someday soon. And Missy too. So we put the supply list up for week two. I don't know if you guys saw that, but um, we put it up last night. I emailed out everybody that's on our uh, email list. If you want to be added to our email notifications, just go to our website, which is mcharpermanor.com. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Give it a second to refresh because it's a little bit bogged down. And then go click the subscribe button and put your email in there for us. Um, that way you will be the first to know as soon as the class the the weekly um projects for the, the class and the supply list are listed so we're going to go in with a little bit of paint here and we're going to just start filling in that section but yes missy's going to be on with us next thursday to do some hand sewn monsters we're going to be taking old gloves and because you guys these these little happy groundhog animals i just showed you you know they're all sewn they she these are this is not a mass production she and sean make these by hand every single one so who better to teach us how to sew a little a little stuffy guy than the missy herself so we're doing monsters with missy on thursday and those, we're gonna start with the form of, here in Ohio we have those uh, little magic knit gloves at every Dollar Tree imaginable because we're cold, you know, we have cold climate here. But if you guys aren't in a spot where you have gloves or use gloves or have, you know, Dollar Trees that stock them, you know, two or three pairs for a buck, you can use a sock. What else did we decide, miss? They could just use some old fabric. Yeah, anything old. Sleeve like, of an yeah. old sweater? Yeah, we can adapt. We can do little things. And we are, um, you know, really getting excited about the photos that you guys are sending us to. I just wanted to let you know that those were the highlight of our evening last night as we were winding down from all of the craziness of our first real day yesterday. We were so excited to see all your photos. So when you guys send us um, photos, we're going to let Manny, the McHarper Manatee, we're gonna let him pick out some of his favorites and we are gonna be posting those like we did last night. We're just gonna, every day we're gonna try to select just a couple. They're, it doesn't mean they're the best. They're just ones that Manny picked and he's a manatee so I'm not really sure exactly what you know, basis he chooses for his favorites, but we're gonna pick some. Um, we might shout you out. So if you send us those photos, that would be awesome. Um, just, you know, 
upload them to Instagram and use the hashtag made with McHarper to get those, you know, on there. Um, search the hashtag to see what everybody else made. That's where we'll grab them or we'll grab them straight from the feed here where you guys post the pictures afterwards. All right, so. There's been a quick want... question. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry, go ahead. Uh, they wanna know if you have to paint the face or should you Not at all. wood? No, so some people choose to leave the face as wood. I used to do um, custom family portraits actually on these peg dolls. I used to do them for people for a long time and um, some people would like to leave the wood raw some people like it um, to match their skin tone some people like it um, you know just a like neutral color which it's totally up to you you pick what were you gonna ask miss they would like to see close-ups each time you work on something okay close-ups here we go And then you can kind of see the edges. They don't have to be perfect. We saw a lot of people checking in from all over. We've got Texas. We've got, um, gosh, so many comments here through Georgia. We've got, we've got lots of birthdays. People oh yeah. Checking in with birthdays. So happy birthday to everyone. <coughs> happy got, birthday. Happy birthday. So happy you chose to spend your birthday afternoon with us. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mix up some color for the hair and some color for the clothing. Your hair can be whatever color you want it to be. Um, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to outline where I want the hair to fall on her. I want her hair to just come down a little bit swoopy right over here kind of a little bit swoopy over here. These are basic guidelines, just so we kind of color block that section out. So I'm just taking my graphite going around, just kind of color blocking that out or drawing it out so that I can color block it out with whatever hair color we choose for her. So she's just got like a really nice, it's so hard to like tell how you guys can see it because this monitor is like above me and backwards, so trying to figure out how to show you this without like, woo! <laughs> but you can see the little hairline there and how it reacts on the front, okay? All right, so we are gonna give her some purple hair. <laughs> you think? Yeah. Purple hair fun? I don't even have purple. <laughs> hey, Aubrey, do you have purple over there? Purple hair. Um. Is this like maroon, purple? Sure. Thanks, darling. Happy helpers. Purple. All right. So since this isn't the exact shade of purple that I want, and mine's a little gummy, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it. I want you guys to work on mixing up some colors. I know that that big set from uh, Folk Art or Delta, the different ones that I suggested had a, a variety. They were like 18 and 24 packs at points because that's all that's all we really had access to via Amazon. That's the, the joy and the pain of it. Sometimes it's like Costco. You got to buy a little bit more than you want just to get it the way that you would like it to be delivered to you. But I want you to, I want you to play with these colors and mix up some colors. Color mixing is my favorite thing. So I'm doing this like little plummy color and some white because I want to give her some lavender hair. I can't wait to see what you guys decide for them. They don't need to be, you know, 100% realistic humans. I hope I see some robots out there. I hope I see some animals. Um, we have done penguin and fox peg dolls. I know somebody asked about a fox yesterday. I will have Tom grab those for me and we'll show you at the end. Hmm? Oh yeah, astronauts. Yeah, we did. We had a, a little firefighter one. We have, we've had doctor, you know, just like little occupational helpers, doctors. 
So for the hair, I'm going in here just with a little bit of a wider brush and I am gonna try to smooth it a little bit around here and then we'll go back in with our fine brush. Well, thanks, miss. Give you a little more context. About yeah, this. yeah, yeah. Can you guys see that okay? Can you see the little people? Here, we'll scoot them down. Yay. And we're still learning. So all the things that you guys are asking for aren't hurting our feelings, okay? They, they're helping us to help you. And that's really why we're here. So continue telling us like things like, you know, we, we want to see the pig doll, et cetera. Um, the things we can't really super control right now are like, <clears throat> excuse my voice. Right now we can't control a lot of the, of the very zoomed in shots. We're working on those like post-production. Um, and those will be made available for YouTube later when we have more time. But as a mom of, you know, four people, four tiny people in my life, I still have to love on my kids at night. So I don't have a ton of, ton of extra time to go in and do all these wild things and have the, the pre mock-up ideas of what people are asking. Like, can we see the, can we see the project for the projects for next week? Um, to totally transparent here. I, I don't have them done. I don't have the, I don't have the actual product done. I have some, you know, I know what we're going to do, but I haven't done it yet. We're going to do it together. Um, to do mock-ups in my regular studio here in Cincinnati, when people visit, a lot of people um, know and have the expectation that I have full demos of everything done, something you can s touch and see and feel before you sign up for the class, but this is a little different. We're on the fly, so. So we're just painting this hair. We're taking our time. We're just filling in as much as we can. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna have opportunities to go back over in the end and we're gonna touch everything up, but we're just gonna go around. The reason that I'm using one of the flatter brushes here and not just a small one is because a flat brush is really nice to get it smooth and looking good and it gives you, you know, a little bit less of the brush strokes that you would see through. And you guys will see these little like choppy, areas where right in here where the mill kind of nicked the the edge and it's okay little hunks out of them like they're made by humans just like us so when you see these little like rough spots on there you could always take sandpaper and sand them down or just paint over it and let it go it's not that big of a deal really we got 10 kids checking in from michigan yeah <laughs> hey michigan all right, so she's got hair and a face, and she kind of looks like the, um, do you remember the Bubble Guppies girl? <laughs> yeah, she kind of looks like the Bubble Guppies girl. Molly. Molly, Molly yeah. yeah, or Una, I, I, I can't remember her name, Dina? It's Molly. Is it Molly, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah it's Molly. Aubrey would know. Aubrey's off screen today, but she's still here. She said thanks, guys, to all the people that, um, to all the people that said her elephant was great yesterday, she was so excited. So I'm trying to, you know, re-move these little peg dolls around for you guys so you can kind of see Some their little faces. Making their, uh, leprechaun themes for... Yes! <laughs> oh my gosh, and if you guys have any of those little like foamy sheets, you can make them a little hat. Just take like some little green foamy sheets and make them a hat. How did you make the ears on the... On her? Or on the... Uh, uh, the fox layer. Oh, on the fox. Those are foamy sheets. So we are a huge fan of those foam sheets that you can get in the little stacks at the craft store. So I will hold him up while we let people catch up with their hair. Um, he's just like, he's got the little foam ears. What we did was I just cut a little piece out and then you can see in here, I kind of, I glued, hot glued and just attached him. I kind of like rounded out the back piece before I attached it. Um, you know, just cut it and guess. It doesn't have to be perfect, but see, you can still kind of see a little bit of the glue on there. But yeah, we just 
added some little ears on for them, and then I painted the ears once they were on to cover up some of that little glue that was sticking through. But yeah, these are super simple, super easy. We did these for a little kids camp, um, a winter break camp, actually. We love peg dolls here. Yes, yes, we do. We do. So while this hair is kind of doing its thing, I'm going to go around the edge with a smaller brush than what I was using before, and I'm going to kind of touch up this hairline. And you can see I'm just kind of going in around the edge, smoothing it out as I go. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to go... A lot of people using toilet paper rolls. Yes! <laughs> All that toilet because paper. Because we've made. got it, right? We have toilet paper. I mean, and here is a fun fact. If you think, well, I have toilet paper rolls that I could be painting. I'm just sitting here watching because my pig dolls aren't, aren't here or whatever. The monster that we're making with Missy on Thursday, we are suggesting some alternate, you know, like fibers to fill it with so you don't have to buy the whole bag of polyfill. A week but Oh, I'm sorry, a week from Thursday. Um, we are suggesting things like cotton balls or toilet paper. So if you wanted to unravel a roll of toilet paper to use for your filling for Thursday and paint the, the paper towel or toilet paper roll today with us, you wouldn't be wasting. Just stick it in a little Kroger bag or, I'm sorry, grocery store bag and yeah, hang on to it. All right, so we're just making sure I've got full coverage around her little hairline. Everything is looking nice and cleaned up. She's ready to roll. Looks good. Now I'm gonna pick her outfit color. They wanna see Haley's too. So Haley is very, 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 very <laughs> focused person. Yeah, so nice. come on over. Scoot your, scoot your little body. <laughs> she is the slowest worker you might meet. Oh, so man. you might not, we call her sloth mode, okay? Haley's nickname is sloth mode because everything she does is very slow but intentional. So Haley is, you know, painting some, let's show. Can I, can I borrow? Haley's got a little man over here. <laughs> He's got some hair. She's already gone in and done some highlights on his hair because Haley's extra. She, <laughs> I told you she's mine. That's, this is why. She's, she's extra. So we're going to go in and we're going to do some fun things too with our hair. But Haley's jumping the gun because it's Haley. There you go. Is it one of the Jonas Brothers? Yeah, it looks yeah. like a Jonas brother, Derek. I think you're right. <laughs> so what, do, uh, what, what happens if someone feels like they've messed something up? You can just paint over it. Yes, girl. Thank you for answering that. You are you are at the uh, point where you're experiencing acrylic paint, which is the easiest medium ever to cover it up. Uh, like I've said a hundred times in our studio, if anybody's ever been in here for something that we do with acrylic paint, my exact words every time are, the worst thing that can happen is you cover it up and you let it dry, let it dry completely, grab a hair dryer, whatever you wanna grab, and then you can, once it's dry, paint right back over it. Um, it may take two coats, it's, you know, the opacity of it, it just depends on the brand, but let that first coat dry, whatever you covered up, and then do it again, and then you're right back to where you started. Haley, everybody thinks you're doing a great job. Yeah. They want to know how old you are. I am 12 years old. I'm turning 13 in July. What grade are you in? I'm in seventh. Seventh grade. She's what our grade fifth. Is Aubrey, uh, Aubrey in from yesterday? Aubrey is in fifth grade. Aubrey is 10. And believe it or not, they are two years apart, but they are still... BFFs, I would say. Yeah, I think a lot of people want us to say hi, hi to Maryland. Oh yeah. Hi to Ontario, Canada. Hi guys. So we're just um, we're gonna be starting on the outfit. I'm gonna give my lady a green dress, and actually, I'll pause real quick here. If you want to section off like pants for a person or something other than a dress, like maybe I'll just give her like a little empire line so I can show you guys what that would look like. We are going to 
we are going to take it around behind and just turn it with your one hand. The easiest way to do it is to start where you want, okay? Hold it with your fingers, and then I always use my pinky as a brace for this, okay? And I just go a little jute, 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 turn them a little bit, and just keep turning them. And that line isn't gonna be exact, but it's gonna match up pretty closely. That's, you know, one of the more challenging things about working on a round surface. So, I mean, it's not perfect, but it works. All right. And then, you know, I will say with the flat brush, it's great for smoothing. It's great for smoothing out any brush strokes that you have and stuff like that, but it is hard to get in small spaces. So switch back and forth between these brushes. It's really helpful to do that. Sorry, babe. No, you're good. Did I bump you? No. Okay. How's everybody feeling about this? Does it feel different painting on something that's 3D versus something that is flat like yesterday? And give me an emoji, you know, like a, a heart or, you know, a like if you're enjoying this process because I will be so honest with you, this is one of my very favorite things to paint. Agreed. Agreed, yeah, Haley loves it too. I wasn't kidding when I said, I think, I think your kids will love these. I think um, some moms cousin, might like it too. Your cousin Patsy is loving this. <gasps> and she loves her superhero oh, bags that you did. For yes, her. my cousin Patsy is an amazing artist. Actually, she is. Uh, she is a phenomenal artist. Patsy has Down syndrome, and I will tell you right now that she, her love for art, has inspired me my entire life. Patsy is. Phenomenal. And yes, I made her some Wonder Woman and superhero peg dolls. I'm so glad you're watching, Patsy. Love you. And Aunt Carol. I know Patsy's not watching on her own. So thank you, Aunt Carol. Somebody wants to know if they can use a hair dryer to help it dry faster. Absolutely. That's my like favorite tool to have in my arsenal <laughs> it is man so you can see i'm just kind of going around filling in all the little cracks my lines aren't perfect yours don't have to be either right lines aren't perfect that's why no one's perfect no one's perfect right you're right Haley. I saw hula frog say something when I looked up at the monitor. I love my hula frog people in Cincinnati. They tell you all the fun things to do with your kids. They have, I mean, ev well, when we're allowed to go out and do all the fun things with our kids, they have the very best resources for places that you can go that you never even knew about. Um, fun story, we were voted hula frogs most loved visual art center in Cincinnati for 2019 and 2020. So they are some of our biggest friends and biggest fans. And I love that you guys are online watching with us. Um, Miss Sarah that runs the East Side chapter. She is um, a great friend and loves seeing her kids in here. All right, so since we did decide to do like a little empire waste here for this lady, I'm gonna mix up another color because I wanna have the bottom of her skirt be a little a shade different. So I'm gonna add a little more white. I hope you guys are mixing. Who's who out there is mixing? Who's making fun new colors? colors? I know. Isn't it the best part? Because it's like shading and then putting highlights. That's like my favorite part is all the details. So who are you making right now, Haley? Is it a is it like a, a person that you know in real life? A generic person? What? Uh, so a celebrity? Who are we painting? Uh, well. You guys are gonna get some tea. Oh ho! Oh my <laughs> I'm gosh! I'm making my boyfriend Grayson. Oh ho ho! Oh. She is painting Grayson. <laughs> <laughs> Haley does have a boyfriend. We have people making Elsa and yes. Anna dolls and stormtroopers. I want to hear all about it, I and I better Harry see Potter. pictures. <laughs> Harry Potter! Yeah! Oh, I made a Harry Potter marshmallow in one of her classes. It was fun. Yeah, we are huge Harry Potter fans here. We do Harry Potter camps every summer, so maybe we'll pull some Harry Potter stuff out from the archives. 
So I'm just starting around here and I'm doing, again, what I have been doing, just filling in this gap. Now at this point, the head and the hair is dry so I can touch it so I can use this side to turn. Um, that's a really nice tip that I like to go with is paint from the top down so that you have like a handle, something to hold on to while you're painting. If it's a little bit sticky and you pull up a little bit of paint, which I do occasionally, you can touch it right back up. I'm gonna switch brushes again because I don't love how we're going here. We're making wolves and dragons and the yes! families. The families are the families are fun, guys. Families are my favorite. Families, everything. I can't wait to see these dragons, though. Somebody wants to know if you can do an ombre ombre paint. Oh, an ombre paint? Do you guys want me to ombre this skirt? Yes. I'll do it for you. Ask and ye shall receive. Favorite freaking thing ever. All right, so ombres are fun. We're just gonna start with our lightest color and then we're going to, I'm gonna move my palette over and make sure you guys can see it really well. We are starting with our lightest color and every time we're just gonna add a little bit more of the darker shade in. And sometimes you guys will see like these little boogers that you get on your <laughs> acrylic, acrylic boogers. Yeah, I said it, I said boogers while I've got green paint on my palette. So we'll just leave that there for now, but um, just mix a little bit of this in your darker shade into your light a little bit at a time and again about the boogers just move them off to the side because they will stick on there but you just want to go with a little bit of the darker shade and you want to kind of work that into what's currently wet okay so this is kind of a little bit more advanced technique but for those people that were asking for teenagers etc um, some older kids this is really a fun way to jazz this up you want to just make sure that you've got a nice band of your light color. And I blend in, I don't know if you can see my palette really well. I'll try to show ya while I have my brush in my mouth. So excuse me for that. I kept my first color here and then I started <clears throat> blending my darker color over here so that I still had that light color if I overdid it with the, with the second shade in. It's kind of like a paint strip. I wanna be able to go back and forth to that top color and kind of you know, kind of blend it in. So, so explain what ombre means. So an ombre is just really a gradation of color down, um, you know, from lighter to darker or darker, darker to light. You can ombre between colors too, like on the colors, on the color wheel, the color spectrum, you could go, you know, Roy G. Biv, you could go red to orange, to yellow, to green, to blue, to violet. And you just, that's just blending them. Okay. So for this, I'm just doing a quick, um, you know, tone ombre. I guess we're not going, uh, we're not really changing the color to another color next to it on the color wheel. We are just changing, you know, lightness to darkness. And I'm, you know, adding a little bit of green in as I go and kind of making them a little darker. Okay. So, you can see that we're just kind of taking it down a little bit at a time. Oh, see, sometimes you get a little chunk in there and then you just pull it off. It's easier if you do it with your brush than your finger because your finger is gonna smudge everything back up. And I'm just blending it. And now I'm adding a little bit more green into what I had. We're going a little darker with the green. Each time. Ooh, Mandalorian characters. Yeah. Are we allowed to say Baby Yoda on the air without getting copyright infringement? <laughs> I guess as long as you don't show one. Baby Yoda. I love that little green guy. Who's with me? He's so cute. I bet you everyone is. Yeah. I hope so, because he's adorable. You can make your own and keep it at home and nobody can say anything. And nobody can <laughs> even try to steal him from you. We had some people tell us that um, they are home this week from what was supposed to be their Disney spring break vacation. And I think it would be such a fun thing to do alternatively to like paint your favorite Disney characters. So I hope you guys are maintaining after not being able to go 
do your Disney trips that you had planned. I know those are so special, especially to our family too. So we get that. When you're done, you can make a play with them. You can, I mean, you can, you can use these for role play. You can use these. These are actually a really interesting Waldorf Montessori tool that a, a lot of kids use for imaginative play. No batteries required, right? That's what we like. When you get a chance with it, people would like to see close-ups of the fox and the penguin. Oh, sure. Again. Cool. Okay, so we're getting to the end on this little ombre skirt. So let me just finish this guy up and then I will show that off. And there's a lot of buffing involved in this if you don't want if you don't want to have lines between your shades, you know, between the tint, just buff. So we went from light to dark and there she is so far. So good. Somebody thinks your skirt looks like Tinkerbell. <gasps> it kind of does, doesn't it? Okay, so here's the well, fox. A lot of families on here who uh, were part of the canceled. Disney yeah, course. I feel so bad for you guys. We, ours, ours is scheduled for May 29th, 30th. So we're gonna we're gonna probably be in the same boat with you guys. So we feel for you, mommy and baby fox, and then the penguins we have the emperor are, are these the emperor penguins yeah with the little frills on their head and then you know baby penguins are always gray so yeah we love them we are huge huge animal animal buffs yes abel i heard you were talking about sloth facts today mm -hmm. abel is missy's son he's here helping helping us hold it down too Abel, what what sloth fact can you tell me about today? Um, that um, so algae grows on the sloths. Algae. Algae grows on um, sloths' backs. And so they can blend into the trees, so like a as a camouflage, predator, such yeah. as a um predator. Yes. Jaguar can get them. That is so interesting. So their their primary predators are jaguars. You said. Yeah. How cool is that? And you learn something from Abel every day. <laughs> Yeah, which is also another fun fact. We will be doing a sloth painting tomorrow. Abel, were you were you researching for your sloth painting tomorrow, or were you just researching and you that's what you found today? Just researching. <sighs> school. He was doing his homework. You doing his homework? Yeah, we have we have some homework this month now, don't we? Yes. But now we have art too. That's why we're doing it, guys. We want you to have some art and some uh, some fun things. I'm going to try to get up here. To know, how many coats of uh, paint do you think you need to put on a doll? You know, it really just depends on your paint brand, to be honest. A lot of it, um, you know, you can kind of see. So in the green, you start to be able to see a little bit more of the wood grain. If you look like by your little hairline, you can see a little bit of it. This particular brand seems to be coming out a little bit lighter than the purple. The purple is really opaque. So each individual paint um, each individual shade or pigment and brand is going to be a little different for my personal preference um, I do one nice coat and then I go back and I hit anything that I missed I don't really I don't really focus a whole lot on making sure that I do two two coats or two layers or anything like that so somebody was asking if they want to put a bun on it yes so that is what I was going to show you too Aubrey that you saw yesterday, Aubrey's signature style is a bun, okay? Crazy, Always. crazy bun head. So Aubrey on this teeny tiny little peg doll girl, we painted the peg doll. We painted everything. Um, then we took a hot glue gun and we just made like a little Dairy Queen swirl on top of her head and kind of tapped it down to make a little, a little plastic, a little plastic glue bun. And then we let that dry and then we coated it with paint to kind of blend it with the hair and you get a little bun. Um, we have added, there is a Sculpey, um, I don't really know what to call it, but it's a, I will try to get a link for you guys. I have it in my, in my art bin, but it's like a product that, that bonds Sculpey to other things. I've made, um, 
maternity peg dolls for people with their little pregnant bellies um, with Sculpey and I've bonded it to the peg doll. So there are some fun things you can add to them. I mean, obviously we add the ears, we add the little hair. Um, these are advanced techniques though. So don't feel like you have to be great at it because we are not, um, we do not have to be pros at this just yet. Practice, practice, practice. Okay, how's are Grayson? Asking, um, for supplies for next week, just a reminder that they are posted. Yes, supplies for next week are posted. They're on the blog. So if you go to mcharpermanor.com and you click on the art video resources link, you'll find week one and week two. Week two is going to be the most prominent blog. It'll be the one on top. It has um, some little watercolor cubes and brushes for the graphic for that one. Um, we also posted on our... Um, Facebook feed that it's available and has a link to it there too. So after the video, you can go back and look in our feed. But yes, week two supplies are listed as well. They are Haley's doing great. that uh, Amazon may be not doing some deliveries. So it would be probably soon, get on soon and get Yes. One. So last night, I mean, my goal to, was to have these lists out to you by Wednesday when we were still operating on, you know, two day Amazon deliveries, but that's not the case anymore. So, um, I got it out as fast as I could. I'm working on week three content right now so that you guys have an opportunity to get those supplies as fast as you can. Um, but again, I'm taking like full content that I feel like is something I can demonstrate on air versus things that I have always in my arsenal. So bear with me while I kind of get some of that content together for you and make sure that these are affordable supplies and supplies that we can reuse and supplies that you can, you know, kind of love forever. All right, now she's a little, she's dry enough to handle. I kind of took everything down to the base for her. Their base is, you know, hard to see from the angle that they're sitting. So I never really worry too much about that. I am going to get my very fine detail brush out and we're gonna start doing, we're gonna start going to work on some details. Seems to be a popular question about the shininess of it. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, peg doll, the family peg dolls we did, we did use a polycrylic clear coat on it yeah that, which makes them shiny and the animals we did not so that's why they're correct shiny. you can so, see them or you cannot it doesn't really so you can use mod podge also makes a great um ultra clear sealant and uh it's in there in the craft aisles at hobby lobby michael's places like that um i like theirs i like deco arts uh clear glaze there is a Krylon triple thick clear spray that you can use. Um, is that brand Krylon, Tom? Yeah, it's yeah. Krylon. Okay. Just be careful with it because it, it gets a little runny. It, it yeah. Do too much. So these are that we've clear coated. That's like a very, you know, final step to it. Not even necessary. The, the acrylics that we're using and the acrylics that I sent to you, they have enough pigment in them um, and enough polymers in them to kind of maintain. Um, if they're going to be heavily used, heavy handling, um, you know, something you want to give as a gift or something, definitely feel free to clear coat those, but it's not necessary. So I'm just going to dip into the dark plum color we've got here, and I'm just going to start giving her a little bit of definition with her hair. These are just little details that are going to make her hair kind of pop. So I'm just kind of making my own little hairline. Your cousin Patsy is painting Halloween themed things. She's getting oh, Yes, Pat. That is... Ghosts. Oh, I love it. Patsy is a fan of the uh, Halloween and the macabre. She's, she's my girl. Somebody had a good idea to put uh, your your emoji of the animal that you're creating. If you're Please, creating that's such that's such fun. Thanks for whoever suggested that. Great idea. You guys have the best ideas. That's why we're in this together. You're making it fun. It was Hillary. Thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Hillary. Good ideas. So I'm just kind of like putting some little lines in here that show the way your hair might flow to kind of give it some dimension. Here come animals. We have sharks. And oh my. A lot of people doing oh, like penguins. Doing a lot of uh, St. Patrick's Day themes. That's so exciting. And Olaf. 
Aww. And warm hugs. We have more questions about how to do like curly hair, maybe some so, dry brush techniques. Yeah. So we will, you know what? Curly hair is yes. really easy. That's, that's what I'm doing. You did Grayson's. Can I, do you mind if I kind of just like plan yours for a second and then we'll cover sure. it back up? You know, you know how we roll. You can cover up acrylic. So curly hair is easy. You he like curly hair, so. Um, so curly hair is super cool, super easy. Um, it's really nice to try to get some squiggles in there with the tip of your brush. So I'm going to give you my favorite, my favorite tip for doing some light curls. Can I use your color so I don't make it too obvious, our differences here? <laughs> so Grayson's curls. Is Grayson watching us today, Ham? I don't know. I don't know. All right. So we're going to take just an, a lighter shade in here and we just want it to contrast what we've got going on in his head already so you could take that hairline you had already drawn out and then just choose a shade above or below but i'm putting i'm loading the paint to my fine brush and i'm twisting it and kind of like rolling that paint off i don't know if you guys can see that technique what i'm doing i'm gonna hold the pan up and kind of show you but i am twisting and rolling this off a little bit so that it keeps my brush nice and pointy. And then I'm just gonna go in there and I'm going to kind of get close here and just kind of do some little squiggles. They kind of look like little cursive Z's, right? Just some little curls in there. And that adds that dimension. And you can see that it looks a little, you know, it gives it that texture that it needs when you're going for curly hair. Um, Tom's beard on his peg doll is just really like a very, very dry brush. And I will show you how we do that too. I take one of the brushes that I love least and I take it and I kind of scrub. So I'll show you, I'll go right back on top of this little guy right here and I kind of scrub to where I get most of the paint off my brush right here on my paper. And you want to use a brush that has like a flat edge or something like that's a blunt end. So give your, you know, scrub off most of the paint and then go in and stipple. And you're just gonna kinda, you know, stab, 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 stab. That sounds bad, but it is what it is. Stippling, stippling, stippling. And then it's gonna create that rough texture. And you're just really just kind of, you know, adding some buffing it in a little bit, you know. So yeah, that's how you do something like that. That's a dry brushing technique that will give you a little bit of dimension there. Um, for some hair or for some facial hair or for some curly hair. Um, I am letting this purple dry on her hair because I'm going to come back in with a little bit of white. But we are going to kind of dry brush a little bit on the top. Just remind us of the hashtag against it. Oh, yeah. Pictures. It is made with Mick Harper. So, hashtag made with Mick Harper. M C H A R P E R. So, I kind of like dry brush at the top here um, just to show you when you take a lot of the paint off your brush, when you tap it off, that you get that really subtle brushed softness to it. And you can kind of, you know, go in, buff that out. There we go. I do think my friend Savannah's watching right now. Oh, hi, Savannah. Ooh, somebody's making Luna love good. <gasps> You guys, I showed you guys our family earlier in the week. Well, last week, I showed you our dogs, and a lot of people loved the pictures of our dogs in our intro. 
My dog Luna is named after Luna Lovegood. My English Bulldog Luna, and she's so chubby and sassy. So she's not at all like the real Luna Lovegood, but I love, love, love Luna. So you can see with the dry brushing, you just get kind of like a, a subtle, soft, kind of fuzzy look to it. Um, I'm going to go in with my white here and I'm just gonna give this purple hair some white highlights too, you know, just make it multi-dimensional just because we can, because it's fun. Um, you know, if I had all day to sit here and play in front of you guys, I would, I would do maybe some turquoise and some other fun things to match, you know, some details on her outfit or something that I gave her, but I'm just going to give you some, some basics. I want you guys to play with it and learn. Be sure to let me know the things you've learned. So people are asking for other things like, if, is there a way to draw shorts, collar? Oh yeah. You want me to draw shorts and a collar here? I'll show you real quick. Reminder. You know, on a man's jeans or shorts or anything like that, I don't ever draw shorts because they're challenging. Um, I always give them a much longer torso than I give them legs. So collars are, are easy. You just kind of, you give them a V-neck there and then you kind of down diagonal and over. You just make that little, that nice little line there for a collar and you get your buttons. All right, and then I even like to give them like their little, you know, their little jean pleats and stuff. I know with some of these bright lights, it's hard to see, but hopefully you guys can see past the reflection on some of these. So, you know, those are like Haley's little jeans here are a little bit easier to see. Yeah. We have, you know, on this one, I gave her a necklace and gave her some little polka dots at the bottom. And as I'm looking up at my monitor, I can see the um, ombre technique that you're asking me to explain. Um, ombre is just where a color fades into another shade or into another color. So if we're like fading a rainbow together, or if we're going from a light to a dark, we're just going from like a light paint to a dark, we're just adding more green into our white. We're starting with this little paint well over here and we're kind of shading it in, um, pulling from our green and moving it over. It's super easy, don't be intimidated by it. It is something that you just do gradually. If you do too much, then you add a little white back in and I kind of save my color. So I start from white and then my next color, I kind of leave here and start adding in this way so I have a gradation. But um, it really is not as hard as you think. Play with it, play with it. It does take practice. So we've got hair, we're doing great. Um, we have a little detail on the top of the dress. Let's give her a little, let's give her a little belt across the top here. Maybe I want to use some, maybe I want to use some blue. Oh, see guys, this is what happens when you don't shake your paint. You see me shaking the paint. So here's a challenging technique that I want to show you for sure before we go. Um, we, if we want to draw a line, again, we're bracing, we're, I'm bracing with my knuckle here with my pinky finger, either pinky finger extended or my knuckle, depending on how, you know, where my position on my hand is. But you really wanna pay attention to um, where you're holding your brush. The closer you are, the more control you have over it, especially on a liner like this. Um, if I'm back here, I have no control over that. Just scrunch down, roll the edge of your paint off, and then get in there with that liner and just kind of slowly, slowly drag it across. All right? Little bits at a time. Don't be scared. How's everybody feeling about this project? Give me some hearts or some, uh, or some uh, laughs if you've, you know, created something funny. I can't wait to see them. Somebody wants to know what brand paint you're using. 
um, you know, it's a, it's a mix. I really, my motto is uh, use what you have, use what you have on hand. Um, I'm using some deco art. I'm using some craft smart, some Americana. I will say folk art is probably my favorite brand for craft paint or uh, Delta. I linked folk art and Delta for you guys in the um, Amazon lists, just because I, I like the coverage with those. They're a little bit thicker. Um, deco art Americana is great. Um, you know, just, I mean, you see every single one I have is like a random, another random bottle. And that's why I make sure you're showing uh, how to do the face before you go. We are at an hour. Yes, we are finishing up her little band here. All right. Okay. So with that being said, we are moving on to final details. Do your face last every single time, um, every single time. It will be the one thing that you put your finger in over and over and over and you want to let that paint sit there without touching it. Um, some people like to add cheeks. I like cheeks on mine, sometimes lips, sometimes not. Um, I'll show you how to do it all, but you don't have to add lips. Hers doesn't have them. His doesn't have them. Um, you know. But we're going to add cheeks on there so that you know how to do them. That is another little... Happy birthday, Kenzie. Little happy birthday, Kenzie action over here. Um, that's another little, you know, quick thing to do. If you want to do it. Grab some paint on your fine brush and make a little circle. Make a little circle. Okay, so they're pretty much centered up. I am going to show you how to do the lips. that I've done on mine. I'm adding a little bit of red into this coral that I put on here, just to make my lips a different color than the cheeks. You could do it all the same if you wanted. Um, lips, I'm just gonna do a tiny little heart, like the top of a heart. Just your two little guys there. And then you are just gonna bring it down a little bit. It's kind of like a little heart, you know? and kind of across, okay? There's your little lips. You hungry, girl? <laughs> Haley's little belly's over here growling. Derek has a great mic, so if it picks that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it did. She has such, he has such a good microphone and she has such a growly little belly over here. We're gonna have to remedy that here in about two she minutes. That pickles and bones. Yeah, she does. We're ready for lunch. Pickles and bones, come out and support them if you're in Cincinnati. So I'm gonna just take the tip of the liner brush. I'm gonna dip this in here, kind of saturate it, get about a glob of paint that's not dripping. And I'm gonna take one tiny, Kind of shook the paint down to the end of that so that I wouldn't have it up on the top but not where my brush is touching. And then re-wet the brush with the black paint and go again. And just dot our little eyes on there. Um, Aubrey's famous technique that she does with it is to take the back of the brush and drop it in there and you can see that's her thing. It just, it makes it a little wider. You can see that the eyes are now a little bit wider um, with the back of that brush. It does kind of make it a little wider. It just depends on what you're into. Um, some people like to add the eyelashes and that you're just gonna wanna take a little bit of water, all right? Thin your paint down a tiny bit and make a little, make a little pool up here. And pig dolls do take a while to make. That's why we don't 
That's why we don't do many commissions for them anymore. <laughs> they are the slowest thing we do. Oh, take trust me, straw I know. Get it in your paint and do like a, a lens for your glasses. Too. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Um, Is you there a reason why the dolls don't have arms? Um, because I, I find that they're kind of hard to draw on um, to yes. make them not look flat and tube-like. So um, I like to keep these really whimsical and simple. They're, they're very much more the Waldorf style mine are. But um, you can always add arms to yours. I've added arms to the commission ones that I do when they're holding something. Um, and you would just, you know, draw them on, you know, give them a little bend at the arms. So they don't look like a tube and have whatever they're holding there in the very center. Okay. Um, but you're going to dip that, that brush in that watered down black, spin it off, and then you're just going to touch this eyeball, the very tip of it, and just pull and that's gonna give you those eyelashes, okay? We're gonna do it on the left side, but it's gonna be hard for you to see because, or it might be easier, who knows? I'm gonna do the same thing, touch and pull. And you just wanna kinda bring all across. So yeah, that's it. Um, she could have a lot more detail, but that's what I'm leaving you guys with today for her. Um, Feel free to ask questions. We will do our best to get to everybody. Thanks so much for painting with us. We really enjoyed it. Add on whatever details you want. Put some you know, flowers on that dress, put a football in that hand, draw those arms on. I wanna see those arms, I wanna see the hair, I wanna see the things you guys add to them. I can't wait for the images to pop up on Instagram. Again, that hashtag is hashtag made with McHarper. So I wanna see everything on that Instagram feed when I'm scrolling through later tonight, trying to get a, you know, a little break in there. That'll be my joyful time. Um, any last minute questions um, from anybody? Know what the, tomorrow? Oh yes, let's talk about tomorrow real quick. We're, tomorrow we're doing a sloth painting. So Abel, I hope he uh, comes correct with those sloth facts for me tomorrow. Um, we are gonna paint an acrylic sloth painting. So just grab one of those eight by 10 canvases. If you didn't get canvases or you don't have them, grab whatever you have. I wanna um, put it on paper, put it on an old piece of wood, whatever you've got, uh, a surface and some acrylic paint, we're gonna get it done. Um, a variety of brushes, your water basin, something to cover your surface, some, paper towels and an apron, pretty much the setup for today, minus peg dolls, plus a canvas. Everything you've got, um, if you have a way that you're organizing your supplies, just go ahead and put everything back together and this is what you'll pull back out tomorrow. Yeah? And, uh, people wanna know how they can support you. Oh, I love that question. So you guys, we really appreciate it. Our studio is closed um, to the public right now, like so many places are, and we are taking donations via Venmo and PayPal. The fees are cheaper for Venmo, so we prefer that. Um, we will be putting the links here, but the Venmo is at Tabitha, T-A-B-I-T-H-A dash McClung. M-C-C-L-U-N-G. And that is the Venmo. The PayPal is paypal.me slash McHarper Manor. Um, I just saw it scroll by. Happy birthday, Maggie. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for hanging with us. Have a great afternoon.